what we'd like to do is to give you some insight into the audience that you should be expecting at Infosecurity Europe, um, our marketing program, and importantly, some of the tools that we've made available to promote um, to promote your presence at the show um, prior. So I'm just going to go through some of those things. So um, across the whole of Reed Exhibitions, now rebranded as RX, um, we, we ask all of our customers, because we aim to have a really deep understanding um, of what they want from each of our shows, irrespective of the market that it's in, we ask our customers a set um, selection of questions when they register to attend the show. Um, so we ask them these seven behaviours, which you can see up here. Um, every show is actually different in terms of what the behaviours are around the show, and we're very clear in then how we build out the show to ensure that we're meeting those customer needs and relieving any of their pain points that they would have within there. So for Infosecurity Europe, the key um, behaviours that we have in here are the learning is the primary behaviour from our audience, followed by exploring, and then the third one is the building behaviour. So in terms of learning, this is really about the whole content and conference program, and it's why it's always been such a critical part of the event that we're running from every aspect, from the sort of technical showcases, the keynote program, the roundtables. So our audience are very much in a learning mode, really wanting to understand the challenges and the solutions that are going on in the industry. Um, exploring is really about engaging with all the exhibitors um, and the stands and finding out actually the latest products and solutions that, um, that are available to them and that we're going to sort of help them in their roles. And that's just a really critical part of what they're looking to achieve. So both of these behaviours actually are very sort of inquisitive, curious, really wanting to stay in tune with the market. It isn't always necessarily about what's new and innovative. It's also about actually reaffirming what they want to know. You know, they want to have that confidence that actually they do know everything that's um, available to them in the industry. And year after year, when we've been researching the seven behaviours on Infosecurity Europe, it's these behaviours that have always been coming, coming out. It doesn't lessen... Uh, the remaining behaviours at all, actually. They are also incredibly important um, to the show, and that's why we put on things like the networking bar to sort of facilitate that type of behaviour as, as well. Post-show, um, when we're doing our sort of post-show research, we also check in with the visitors to find out what their objectives were and actually how well we met them to reach the satisfaction score. So we will make sure that we understand all of those sort of qualitative and quantitative numbers to, to ensure that, you know, if, if there's any areas that need improving or that we want to build on and grow, that we're really clear on what that could look like. Um, alongside our audience behaviour on Infosecurity, we also use personas, which I'm sure many of you are very familiar with. And we've been using our personas for... A, a number of years since 2015, actually on infosecurity, and again alongside the behaviours, we very much uh, bring these to life to ensure that actually across the whole show floor, that we're meeting all of the needs between our personas. So all of the personas are very important to us, actually, because we are everyone and everything you need to know in information security. And we very much live and breathe with that value proposition in terms of actually how we build out the show. Um, and, you know, we're probably one of the few remaining dedicated shows to information and cybersecurity. Um, and, that, and, and that's why all of these personas are incredibly important to us. And we, we literally, uh, you know, table out how we're meeting each of their different needs. So just to give you a little bit of insight into them, so you can sort of imagine, you know, these personas are very much about their sort of uh, behaviours as well as their sort of job positions and seniorities within the business. So Senior Steve is typically the sort of CISO, CIO audience in there, 
Um, and, you know, in terms of coming to the show, they're really looking for the conference programme. They will also engage in our leaders programme, wanting to network and meet with their peers as well. Um, and then also with Techie Tarek, for example, that's very much the sort of sort of technical side. And what they're looking for is really the product knowledge and very much to have on the stands an expert that they can come and talk to about the technology and the products that are being showcased as well. It is very possible that a, um, that a senior Steve has been a, a Techie Tarek. It's not that they are the only technical um, person within the audience, actually all of them are technical, but it's just in terms of their behaviours at the shows that we've uh, looked at. We've looked at matching our um, audience uh, behaviours and the personas, and I just wanted to show you how they all come out in terms of what they do. So you can see across this chart that there's a dominance of the red section of learning and the green section of exploring and building. So those were just our three green ones. There is no real differentiator between the personas. They're all looking for that type of thing across the whole show in, in, in different ways. So um, I hope that's given you some sort of in, insight into sort of how we uh, shape out the show and then actually it influences in how we build out the marketing program as well. So as you can imagine our marketing program is, is omni-channel, no surprises there, um, and it's a sort of working throughout, throughout the year, but of course in the four months prior to the show it really ramps up when we open registration and then all the other marketing elements come in that. And in terms of some examples of um, what Susanna's put up, some examples here of what we do, we obviously have a segmented email campaign that's going out on a regular basis, taking people through the customer journey into the show, which is supported both with organic, social, um, and paid for digital marketing campaigns as well. In tandem, we work with all the relevant partners and associations in the industry um, because achieving CPE credits and those learnings is a, a key part um, of what we want to offer in our um, conference program. So we work with ISC Squared, ISARCA, Cloud Security Alliance, Crest, um, and all of the major associations as well. So they too will be running sort of workshops, roundtables within the show. So some of them have got stands, like Sands, for example, um, and they will always bring a variety of different things to the event. Um, we have a year-round PR campaign, which uh, Maureen is going to talk to you a little bit in a little bit. Um, and also Maureen has touched upon some of the social advocacy tools um, that we use as well for speakers, visitors, and for yourselves to promote um, in there. And I'm going to touch on those in, in a minute and a little bit more. And, in, and importantly, what we have alongside us is our sister magazine, Infosecurity magazine, which is obviously operating as a digital platform all year round. And we very much benefit from the sort of exposure that they give the show, the data build that goes into our marketing campaign. And then in a couple of weeks, when their next issue comes out, both in print and online, it will include the show preview, which is going to give um, the attendees and the visitors very much an overview of everything that's happening at the show. So it's including the entire conference program, the floor plan, the exhibitor listing. So obviously, you know, that's a, a sort of key part of what's going out as well. So moving on to the tools um, that we have um, to help, and hopefully you are all familiar with these because whilst we are sort of stood up here today with a lot of information. Actually, back at the office, we have, you know, uh, customer service teams and customer success teams who should be consistently reaching out to you to ensure that you have everything you need for the show. So hopefully we're only reaffirming um, the information that is already out there. And that's across the piece from sort of marketing tools um, and operations as well. But do let me know if none of this is 
familiar to you and I can ensure that you get, get the right uh, links. So firstly, the exhibitor directory, which is obviously live on our website, is your window to the world of InfoSec. It is where all paths lead to for infrasecurity in terms of our communications and giving visibility on all of the exhibitors at the show. So it is in critically important to ensure that the listing that you've got within the exhibitor directory is complete as well. Um, so everything, you know, from your logos to your products that you can upload to company descriptions. We know that the visitors will pre-plan before they get to the show and they will be going through um, the exhibitor directory as well. Um, then on to the exhibitor dashboard. I don't know if any of you are familiar with the dashboard yet. No, doesn't look like it. Okay. So this, this is um, accessible through the exhibitor portal. The exhibitor dashboard is new for 2022. And obviously, one of our aims as an event organiser is to ensure that you get value out of the show, that you get your return on investment with us. Um, and previously, you know, to, to, to su support the value, then obviously we're doing, there's lead scanning going on at the show and we do qualitative surveys. But this is very much a quantitative tool that will show you how many product views you're getting on your exhibitor directory, how many referrals are going back to your website, how many leads that you are getting, just visible to you, to your company, um, so that you can really now begin to sort of see the value that you're driving out of the show. We have two versions of the exhibitor dashboard. So we have this dashboard here, which does all of those analytics that's in there, and we also have um, Exhibitor Dashboard Pro. The difference between this sort of this version and the Pro is that within the Pro, you can segment yourself into your product category, and you can be compared to other companies, competitors, uh, for want of a better word, within your own product category. So you can see how you're performing against. Um, competitors within your uh, product category. So the information is anonymized, so you're actually just seeing trends rather than a specific another company. Um, but that's also available. So we have been taking the time during the pandemic, pandemic and when we weren't able to run shows to be developing these digital products as well. The next, I'll just check that I've covered everything on that one, yeah. Okay, um, and the next tool that we have to use really is to allow you to let your clients know that you'll be there. It's called Fusion Exhibit, and again, this should be available to you, should have been made available to you um, through the Exhibitor Portal, Exhibitor Success Hub, and this is a sort of area where you are given assets um, in terms of logos, branding, uh, templates to use to invite your own clients to the show. So you can do everything from um, do a co-branded um, invite that's going out with a co-branded registration page that's bespoke to your company, um, as well as doing banners to say that, you know, promoting across social media, that you're attending Infosecurity uh, Europe as well and also any um, social posts on there as well. And the next slides just really give some sort of examples of how that works. Um, and the example here that's been used is, is um, Infosecurity Magazine. So that's like a co-branded registration page going on there as well. And banner ads. So, okay. Um, the last tool uh, to use is the app. Um, so we will be, as usual, having a show app on there. Um, it will give the sort of facilities to allow the visitors to plan their schedule, see full interactive uh, maps, help them find their way around the show, complete exhibitor listings. And also it enables exhibitors to reach out to the visitors where they have logged in and given permission. 
um, to do so. They can also, visitors can network um, amongst each other, but also again when they've logged in and given the sort of data permission that goes in there as well. It's an integral part of our sort of communication and it will be providing everybody with uh, real-time updates within that. Visitors can access the app and see the information without logging in, but actually if they do want to save anything to their schedule or they do want to network, they do have to log in at that point. So they'll sort of be able to see the sort of floor plan without, being, uh, without having to log in and do it that side. Um, so this is part of our drive for sustainability. So uh, RX, the owners of Infosecurity, uh, with the global industry body have committed to uh, reduce the carbon footprint. Um, it's one of the founding partners by 2050, 2050 um, and half greenhouse um, emissions by 2030 as well. So we're looking to uh, work with all of our sort of suppliers and customers to start running um, sustainable shows and apps and all of our digital tools are part of that drive coming in as well. It's not launched now, so I think it is launched four weeks out from show. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, uh, also, we have the smart leads scanning tools. So uh, many of you will have the smart app uh, working on your stand to collect visitor leads um, from there where you're able to um, set questions. Uh, the company providing the app and the smart scanner readers, Conduco, um, is coming along this morning to present. Um, so he, Aid, he will be able to give you a lot more detail on the um, SMART event as well. So rather than sort of steal his thunder, I'm going to leave it there. Is there any questions around the marketing? Any information? Yeah. We're not having the show guide as we've had done before, so the very sort of full show guide. We're not doing that. We do have the app with all the information on it, as you say, but then also to help the visitors, because obviously being in a new venue, in a large show, we want to ensure they find their way around and they have everything to hand. So we will have all the sort of you are here, oh, sorry, the you are here boards with all the information on but also we're doing a sort of like a smaller fold out print guide. So it's like, I do like this sort of concertina effect to show it, which will have all of the um, floor plan on it, all the exhibitor listing and all of the conference program. So it sort of comes down into like a little DL size guide and that will be available as they come into the show at the information points if they need to pick up anything printed. So the, the one on the right-hand side, yeah, so that is something that you can um, purchase from us, the Smart Read Scanner, um, and it sits on the stand with a graphic similar to that around it, and it's a device that's going to enable visitors to self-scan themselves. So you have the choice of either scanning them through your own, or if your stand is busy, or they feel that actually they just want to whiz by and scan, the information it gives them the facility to be able to do that and then on that reader you can attach content that you want to go out to the visitor so aid i'm sure we'll go into a lot more detail about this so you can as a company decide whether you want uh, you know a company brochure to go out with them or a particular piece of literature and then at the end of the day the visitor will get like a daily digest of all of the stands that they have visited and how they've moved around the show and with the links to all of the information that you want to attach to the readers as well. So it's really, we've been using it across other events really successfully for a number of years now. Um, and so we're sort of rolling it out on the footprint of all, all of our events. And we have found that actually visitors really engage with it. 
um, and you know for many different reasons. But yeah, those they are available to everybody. Yeah, they can be purchased, but to everybody. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, I don't think it's included in any of the packages, is it? Uh, no. It's probably not included in the standard basic packages. Um, however, I'm more than happy to, to take it offline and speak to Secretary about this. Yeah, because you can buy it by the it in volumes, you know, the licenses. You're buying multiple licenses. Right. Yeah, and you can buy multi multiple readers as well. You mentioned the uh, publication of the top magazine. Do yeah. you know exactly when that comes out? And is it possible to get a copy of that if you're not a subscriber? Uh, yes, it is possible to get a copy of that if you're not a subscriber. It goes online at the same time that it comes out in print. Would you like it in print? Is that? Uh, yes, please. Okay, I'll come and see you afterwards. That's not a problem. Yeah, it's going through production at the moment, so we're proofing the show pre preview this week, and then it, I think it comes out, and I was asking Eleanor, the editor, this yesterday, and she goes, I can't remember, understand why I can't remember this date. It's a month before the show, so I think it's mid to the end of May. So, yeah. Any other questions? Great. Well, I'm around, um, you know, obviously for the duration at the end, if there are any more specific questions. Okay. Um, Maureen. Thank you. Today I'm going to talk to you about the PR opportunities on behalf of uh, Origin Coms that couldn't um, come today. So we have a team really um, dedicated to um, help you maximize your um, participation at the show. So we will have also a press room um, on site on the show floor. That's where we have um, all of the um, the press uh, there. So um, I would yeah encourage you to um, engage with the PR team if you're willing to um, schedule any interview with them. So you won't be able to access the press room um, if you haven't contacted them in advance and scheduled um, an interview with uh, with the press um, in advance. So it's situated on the show floor, right next um, to the um, keynote area. I think I can, can point, that's, that's a keynote stage that we showed you earlier on on the show floor, and uh, that's a press room here. Um, so, yeah, in the, in, in, um, in the activities that you can um, engage with, uh, with the PR team, so um, if you have um, any research, any um, product that you're launching, any um, um, tech development that you want to, um, to highlight at the show, uh, that's quite important that um, you kind of share this information um, with our um, PR team. So um, we have what we call the press comms um, going out to the media. Um, and the deadline for this is the 13th of May. So, yeah, if you have any PowerPoint presentation, white paper that you would like to share uh, before, the, before the show, and you want to make sure that these are shared with the media prior to the show, um, it would be great if you can um, yeah, engage with the, with the PR team to share um, that information with them. Um, and of course, all the way um, to the date of the show, we will um, promote uh, all of the activities um, that you will have happening, um, but those will be happening on um, social medias. We can also share um, the list of uh, media that we will be um, present on the day of the show. So um, also if you contact the PR team, they will be able to um, send a list of uh, the press that will be there on site. Um, in previous year, we had um, over 100 uh, press present. Um, so yeah, if you want to know exactly which one is, um, is there at the show, will be present at the show, um, don't, don't hesitate to ask us. Um, so I think um, this uh, slide is about uh, the spokespeople. 
So uh, you may have in your company really, uh, really good people, senior people, your CEO, your CISOs, um, that you think would add uh, great value into promoting um, your presence at the show. Um, so if you're willing to, um, to introduce them with the PR team, um, there are a few activities that we can um, engage them um, in. And uh, yeah, if you want to do um, any um, video um, that we can share on social media, um, uh, it would be yeah the the, the 20th of June, uh, the latest deadline um, to schedule um, these interviews. Um, during the show on site, uh, you will also have uh, media alerts happening uh, on a on a daily basis. So um, every day at midday. Um, we will have, uh, um, the PR team will have um, uh, gathered all of the information and these information will be released um, every morning the day after. So that's another way to um, engage uh, and share our latest, um, latest news uh, with, with, with our audience. Um, um, on site, we will have a crew as well. So we have two type of interviews that we can um, schedule together with you. So um, one of them is called the Vox Pop. So they are more opinion-led uh, type of interviews. And the second type of interviews um, are the roving reporter interviews. Um, so if you're keen to have your spokespeople um, taking out part in any of these activities, um, do let us know before the 13th of May as well. Um, and yeah, I think one thing to highlight again is uh, the Twitter hashtag. Uh, you can check uh, the link to our YouTube channel or Facebook or LinkedIn if you want to share and spread the word. Uh, yeah, and all of the information regarding the deadlines and the type of uh, PR activities can be found on um, the on the website uh, under the PR kit. Um, so yeah, all of the deadlines and also the contacts of uh, yeah the PR team. So we have um, uh, Paula that is part of the team that would be uh, usually um, yeah um, helping you out with this. So the yeah that's. Uh, the email address that you have uh, for contacting the PR team and obviously they will be there um, on site um, at the show um, if you have any questions or if you want to share information with them um, on site. Um, 